Okay, so for our next tutorial here, um, we're going to be browsing right here. So now, if you do not see this browse tutorial here, make sure that you close out of Photoshop and click quit. Okay, I'm on Adobe Photoshop 2022 and I'm on the Creative Cloud. So I'm not sure what version you have, but this is what I have. Again, if you don't see this tutorials, you should close out and quit Photoshop and open it up again. And make sure you're, if you're able to, update to, to the latest one, if, if that's not going to cause a problem. So here we're going to go look through our tutorials here. And I have all categories selected and I have all skill levels selected. So I'm back in orientation and I'm going to select get to know layer mask. So this image right here, get to know layer mask. And I'm going to click start tutorial. And I'm going to make this a little bit lower. I think let's try 170 for me on my screen. Let's go a little bit bigger here. Let's try 180. Let's see if we want to go even a little bit bigger. Let's try. I'm just keep keep going until it's a good size for me. You don't have to do this, but this is what I'm doing. Okay, that looks pretty good. And it says right here, first thing we're going to do, it says click on an empty part of the woman layer to select the woman layer. So right here, I'm going to select this layer. I did that. It's selected. And then right here it says add, I mean, click the add layer mask icon to add a layer mask to the woman layer. So click here. So we're going to click that right there. Okay. Now we're going to click continue. So that one I clicked was this little square with a circle in it. And then you should see like this little box next to it, a white box, white square, rectangle. Click next. Now it says notice the new white layer mask thumbnail on the woman layer. At first, this mask has no visible, visible effect on the image. You'll change that by adding black and gray paint to the mask. Click next to continue. So I'm going to click next. Now, this image has a woman's face on one layer and a cat face on the layer below it. You'll combine them using a layer mask. Okay, so that's what we're doing. It says make sure that to make sure there is a border around the white layer, okay? Mask thumbnail. So we want to make sure we have the right one selected. So we see that indeed this does have a border around it. So that's what we'll be working with. If there isn't, click on the layer mask thumbnail to select the mask. Click next to continue. This is important. Otherwise, if you don't have the right thing selected, it happens a lot. Um, you'll be applying it to the wrong, to the wrong layer. And so we have one layer here, another layer, and then we have a mask on this layer. So if you don't have the right one selected, it won't work, whatever you're trying to do, and it will be confusing sometimes. So now we're going to click Next. So now it says click the tiny white and black squares, the default color icons, to set foreground color box to white and the black color box to black, the background. Okay, so the first one is always the foreground. So we need to click on this uh, these squares right here. And we want to click on it like that. And it says click the tiny white and black squares to set the foreground color box to white and the background color box to black. So I'm going to go like this. That's white. And then I'm going to click on this other square and make this black. So the top one should be white. And the bottom one should be black. And I'm going to click Next. Now, you can switch it. It says click the bent arrow icon to switch the foreground and background color so that the foreground color is black. Okay. So now this little arrow right here is pointing to it. If I click on that, that will switch the background and the foreground squares. So this white one's foreground right now and the black one's the background. When I click this, 
it switches so the black is the foreground and white is the background. That's important to know, then you'll know what you're applying. So now it's, I'm gonna click next. And right here it says, select the brush tool. If this tool is already selected, click on another tool and then back to the brush tool. It's not selected, so I'm just gonna select this one time. Now that I clicked on it, right here it tells me to click to open the brush preset picker. Set the size slider to about 150 and the hardness slider to zero to create a soft edge brush. Click next to continue. So right here, uh, it says 150. So it's at 80. So I'm going to go to 150. And if it's not exact, it's fine. And I can even click in there and change the numbers manually. Okay. But I don't need to. Right here, it says this hardness needs to be set at zero. And then make sure you have this soft round brush selected, okay? So let me click out of there. So I clicked outside of that box somewhere. And then now it says click next to continue. So I'm going to click next. It says brush over part of the woman's face and eyes from below her hairline. So this is her hairline right in here, okay? So we're going to go below this. And it says just below her nose. So we're just gonna go right under here, okay? And from one side or face to the other, do, don't worry about including too much. You'll fix that next. Click next to continue. So we're gonna paint over here with a paintbrush with those settings. Black is the, is the foreground color. So let's just see what happens to this layer mask that's white when we do this. So when we do this, it's hiding, it's hiding this, part right here wherever we go over this is hiding it okay and let me go command z because i want you to see something right here i have the opacity to 50 we're going to change that to 100 okay so by changing that opacity there we go now see that so if i do too much it's okay so i'm just going from side to side Oh, try it again here. You might want to possibly do a little bit and then let go. So that way, if you mess up, you can kind of just go back. And I always try to do little ones. And then that way, I can always... Now, it's okay if I mess up because I'm going to show you how to, to fix that, okay? And right here, we're kind of putting in that. Okay, so we did it. We went behind below the hairline right there. We went a little bit below the nose and we did that. So now it says click next. It says the black paint on the layer mask, see that black part? Conceals part of the woman's face, showing the cat face below. So we're hiding parts with this mask of this layer here so we can see what's underneath it. This isn't a permanent change, which is an advantage of a layer masking over erasing or deleting. So this is better than simply erasing or deleting because it's not permanent. We can just, we can go back and change things. We'll show you. So click next to continue. So now click the bent arrow icon again to switch colors so that the foreground color is now white. Click next to continue. So now we're going to switch spots. We're going to switch it so that black is going to be the background and white is going to be the foreground by switching that arrow. Now we're going to click next. Now it says hold the shift key and click the layer mask thumbnail. So we can we can sit, hold down the shift key and click this and it turns it off so we can see what we're working with. It says, this turns the layer mask off temporarily as shown by the red X. Evaluate whether you hit something with the black paint you didn't mean to. Click next to continue. So looking at this, holding down the shift button, I'd be like, did I hide something I didn't want to? Uh, maybe just a tiny bit right in there, the edges, but I don't know. Um, let's click next.
Okay, so we turn it back on. It says, now paint with white over any hidden parts of the woman you want to bring back into view, like a finger or some hair. The white paint reveals those parts of the woman again. So click next to continue. So this is what's happening. So let's say if I went too far, let's, let's just show you. So let's just say I go over too far like this. And now I am like, oh, wait, I was, I'm hiding some of her hair there, over here, okay? So by looking at that, holding that shift and clicking back and forth, I can, with white as a foreground color, I can come and I can fix that. So what's cool is you can go around and kind of just fix what you need to by going black, white, black, white. Okay. And I can just kind of continue to kind of fine tune whatever I want to fix there. It's kind of a cool process. And you know, it doesn't look that bad here. It looks pretty close there, okay? So now, this is what I see. This is what I want, okay? So this works. You know what, though? I'm, I might go a little bit farther here. So it's kind of looking like... There. There, that looks a little bit better now. Now I'm going to... Click next, because I think I went over that part kind of good. Now it says click the foreground color box to open the color picker. So let's do that. Cool. Now enter H0S0B33. So here we see H, that's at zero. Here we see S, that's at zero. And now B, we're going to change this to 33. Ah, look at that. It went to like a gray to set the foreground color to middle gray. That's 0033 on the HSB is middle gray. Also down here with this number, the hex number, you can see 54, 54, 54, that's middle gray. Click OK. And now it says click next to continue. So we can go next here like this. And now it says paint along the hairline with gray to partially conceal the hair there. This blends the hairline of the woman layer with the cat on the layer below. Click next to continue. So with this, I'm gonna go over this gray and kind of merge it so it matches better. So let's go like that. There. So that, see how that kind of fixed it there a little bit? And now if I'm not happy with that, I can always cl click this with uh, the white and I can kind of just, there, that looks a little better. Let's go back to the gray, kind of come in here a little bit, right? There, there we go. That kind of puts it back and forth and then let's, let's go back to black here. just painting up alongside of it there okay now that we did that that looks pretty good you can kind of see how i go back and forth it's really cool white gray black once you know what's going on you can do that pretty easily now let's click next and that's it we did it so if you're my student what we always want to do because we don't have a lot of space in canvas the site that we're using currently right now if that's what we're using you want to resize this image. So normally, when you have all these different layers, you would save it as a Photoshop file. After you save it as a Photoshop file, to turn it in with uh, Canvas or whatever we're using, we want a JPEG. So first, we're going to make it go lower, smaller size. We don't need as many pixels. Let's see what size this is. So I'm looking for the width or the height. What's the biggest one? And I'm going to change it to 1,000. That's the width, 1,800. We're going to change that to 1,000. This is for my students, so this might not apply for you. Hit OK. And then I'm going to double click this little hand and it will fill up the screen just so I can get an idea. And I can see that it's slightly pixelated just because it's a, it's a smaller image, which is fine for the web. I'm not going to be viewing 
my students work this big. So right now I can save a copy. I'm going to save this on my computer. And I'm going to change uh, this to a JPEG. Well, let's first change this, the name of it. The name of it is going to be get to no layer mass. And then I'm going to change this from a Photoshop file to a JPEG. So, and then I'm going to find out where it's going. Downloads, that's a great place to go. Click save. Quality of six is good. Okay. And there you go. That's uh, the tutorial from Adobe. Uh, get to know layer masks.